to make a free roam scenario. So I thought I'd quickly run through that and then we'll get on and do another scenario. It also gives me an opportunity to show off the, um, the Whippen branch, which is a workshop route. Um, so, what we're going to do, uh, let me switch back to the game. And I'm going to turn my camera off. Ooh, I've disappeared and the cab's still there. That's just spooky and wrong. There we go. Cameras are everything. All camera stuff is on. Right. <clears throat> so making a free roam is dead easy. Um, and if you are thinking of making a scenario for the first time. Hey there, Mummer of Two. Welcome to the channel. If you're thinking of making a scenario for the first time, then, and you've never done it before, give making a free roam a shot first uh, because you do all of the sort of the basic setup stuff uh, with a free roam scenario and then really all you do with a normal scenario is give everything the instructions. Um, so I'm on this screen now we've got Wiccan branch which you can download from workshop uh, if you have the required dependencies. Um, it's a lovely route, highly recommend it. Um, and now so in the I've clicked build in the scenario tab and we click new scenario now, because this is a workshop route, these uh, location things will be based on the route that the route was based on. Wow, I think I just said the same thing twice and one in the other direction. These are no use to you for a workshop route. How about that? Yeah. Route origin is the only one that's of any use to you. So click here, click free roam. Um, and uh, let's type a title in here. So let's do this as Twitch Free Roam. Good enough for me. Hey, Pete Burr, welcome to the channel. And we will click Create. Right, so we started a bit underground. So um, moving around, right mouse button and uh, drag your mouse around is move. Hello. We're still underground though. Uh, forwards and backwards is up and is the up and down arrow keys. Control up moves your camera up. Control down moves it down. And as you can see, we finally found ground, so we can now move around. Uh, you press the shift key to uh, speed up your movements. Now let's do a little bit more moving around the map. Um, over here on the top panel, uh, there's this little logo here. If you click on this little circular panel, the right hand side shows some um sorry no you can't use that on a free roam i just said that earlier on so what am i doing um so if we come out of that if we press the nine key and bring up the map that's what i'm looking for so let's say we want to start our put some player trains here all right so if we control click so what i'm doing here mouse up uh, mouse uh, up and down to zoom left click and drag or right click and drag they both move the map around um, and then uh, control and click will move the uh, map to that point and it will update the latitude and longitude so you can now press this play button. Cheers Speedy. Now having pressed that play button stuff happened so if we right click we've actually moved in the world and that's what that control left click did. So if we now come up and uh, out of the ground we're now where we control left clicked so what we can do now is um, is place some stuff. So how do, what do we do with a free roam? What are we actually trying to do with a free roam? We are trying to place just trains, wagons, rolling stock, whatever you like, and um, then people can just do whatever they wish with it, drive it around. It becomes a bit. It's your own private world. There are no AI trains, and there are no instructions for the player to follow. They can just do what they like, which is nice if you just want to run up and down a branch line, for example. Uh, picking up and dropping off and doing exactly as you please. Um, so if we just pick first one of the uh, one of the trains that's already here. So let's pick this uh, Woodhead AF, which is uh, there, and we just click it, and then we you can see it snaps to the track. We click it once to drop it down. Let's do another one. Click it to drop it down. Now if we do the um, AF tender, click it, and move it around. You see it's on the track, and you'll see it snaps. When it gets close to the uh, the loco, when you click, it's coupled up. Same for that one. Now, 
if I want to move this train, I can either do it by moving the uh, by clicking and dragging and moving, or click and clicking and dragging and moving, or I can get hold of. I click this button down here in the bottom left, and then click that and move that around like this. Now, um, hey there, HD Gaming. Um, if you don't have these panels on the left hand side, that's probably because by default they are all hidden away like that. Uh, and as you move your mouse over them, so they appear and then they disappear. And then what you do is you use these little pins up here which you click on and that stops them from disappearing. What I recommend you do is if you're making scenarios or editing at all, pin those out because uh, having them flapping in and out all the time can be a pain. So we've just placed a couple of 8F locos. Now if we want these to be able for, available for the player to drive, we need to put drivers on them. So we click this driver icon and click on the loco. And that's it. They're, those two locos are now something that the player can opt to drive if they want to. Now, this siding over here looks like it's looking for something. Hey there, Doc. Yes, we're doing a free roam scenario, just something hopefully a little bit quick uh, that anyone can have a go at. So one of the dependencies of this route is the Falmouth branch. So we've actually got access to Falmouth wagons by default. So let's put some Falmouth three planks in here. So again, I'm just clicking on stuff and buffering it up. See, if I move it, it buffers up. Um, you can go a bit silly if you want to, just click lots. Um, now, if I want to move those, again, because I've got groups selected, I can just pick up and move the entire rake of wagons, put them anywhere I like. Obviously these instructions all fully apply for German, American, South African, whatever kinds of trains that you prefer to drive. Let me update this, I've just realised. And we're also saying Marias Pass over on the right hand side. Okay, so so we've got some locos, we've got some wagons. Now remember that the entire route needs uh, could be populated. I almost said needs. It doesn't need anything. It's entirely down to what you want to put here. So um, we could put a train waiting in here, ready to go. So let's do that. So let's uh, let's use some different DLC now. So if you click this object set filter box, this little one snuck over here that has so much power in it. And then if you don't see this box again, normally when you click this, nothing particular will happen. But actually over here you've got this, this other slide out box. So click the pin once you've got it out so you can see it. So up here we've got um, providers and we can choose what we want to actually see. So let's go for Victory Works and uh, let's stick a, uh, a small prairie. Uh, in here, so we click the small prairie pack, and uh, if we now uh, back to the locos, and here we are, we've got uh, let's have a nice, it's got to be a great western loco, hasn't it? Really, because I've got no idea where the brick and branches I must admit. So let's just say it's a great western loco, put that there over here. We've got some coaches, yes, we have some coaches, and uh, let's get the uh, let's put a uh, BR a chocolate first. And let's put a couple of seconds behind it. And then we'll put a, uh, a break second at the back. Okay, so that's made a train up by clicking and, uh, and putting items on. And then again, I'm just going to click on that and give it a, thing, a, uh, a driver so we can drive it. Right. So we've got... Um, couple of player locos here we've got a couple of uh, one loco here let's move along down the route now let's fly down the route and see what we see uh, now if we remember the map view that sort of goes round to here but then the route actually follows off to the right so let's do that so we follow off to the right here the thing to remember is um, when you're setting up a free run you really want to consider what everyone will do rather than where the, everything just starts because you'll start off in your driver train but maybe when you come down here you want to pick some wagons up so let's put some wagons here what you don't want to do of course is overfill the route so you've got nowhere to drop wagons off so let's put a couple of wagons in there and uh, we'll put another little loco so we'll go back to our object set filter and we will go to uh, victory works again 
Yes, so far the light fixture box comes in. 14xx, back to the loco, and let's stick a, uh, a 48xx just sitting over here. And uh, turn it around. Uh, so turn it, toggling them around. If you click on it, you get the arrow, and you can just use the arrow to toggle them around. Click the driver, put a driver on it. Carry on flying down the route. There's another station here. So let's stick a, uh, a different loco in here. Let's put um, a hall in here. And we'll put the tender behind it. And then, because we've got the group select, we can select the whole thing and tip, click that, and it will move the whole thing. Let's put that back into here. So that it's a little bit in there, and then we will put a driver on that as well. If you're putting a loco in, you may as well stick a driver icon in it, so that if someone decides they want to drive that, they can. So there's some interesting sidings going on over here. Um, but I think what we might do is leave that empty in case you want to drop something off. In another scenario, you may want to make that filled. Uh, let's put something in here. So, we've added a bunch of... Um, other things, so uh, the, we've gained access to a, a, a variety of different um, wagons. So let's put some of um, Victory Works wagons in here. So I think you're getting the picture at this point. It, it's really a fairly simple case. Um, so I think we've got it to that point now. So let's just go around here. Just draw a flying with the up arrow and the shift key pressed. That's it. And uh, we'll put one more loco and some uh, and some coaches. So let's put some coaches in the siding over here. Um, where did my coaches go? There they are. Let's just put a bunch of uh, second chocolate creams in there. And we'll put another hall loco here. Anywhere you like, and we can then move it where we want to. So I click it again, click, and then put it back in to there, and then we'll put a drive right. Destinations and names of locos. That's a very good point. Thank you. Right. So this loco is um, have a call 49, 4938. So if we double click on the loco, sorry, double click on the driver. Okay. Maybe you can't set the number on this one, actually. Uh, probably a bad choice. I'm not doing very well here. Um, so if we go for the 48XX, and click it round, double click on that, no. <laughs> oh dear, I appear to have forgotten how to do it. That's embarrassing. Or everything I'm selecting won't let you change the number. Just a nice grungy diesel in this uh, this bit over here. Put a driver on it. Okay, I'm struggling to work out why I can't change the numbers on these. How bizarre. Hey there, host bike Mike. Good to see you. Hope you had a good uh, holiday. Right. So the other thing we can add in a free roam is a bit of scenery if we want to. Um, so let's add something in here. Um, hey there, W. Colf. Good to see you on the channel. Thanks for joining us. Um, let's go to... Where are we going to go? We're going to go in here. And we're going to. How can we stick this house? In this scenario, there's another house here. And this house floats above the ground, apparently. Oh no, it doesn't. Shadow is just a bit wonky. Um, and. There's some Rose Bay Willow just in front of it. So I click, and having pressed and held the mouse, I can rotate it around.
Right. That's a good idea. Let's just pick something um, simple. Um, so let's go for RSC. And we'll go for. Class 20. Where's the class 20 gone? There you are. Let's stick a class 20 in there. It's still not letting you set the number. Okay. And let's stick a driver on there. Yes, you might you might be right. Let's do must admit, free roams are not something I build particularly frequently, but I've never had this trouble before. Right, so we've basically gone round the route and we've added stuff down. Yep. And that's basically all there is to doing a free roam. So if you now press the play button, and it doesn't matter about having to come back out if you would want to, because in this case, really, all the signals pretty much are going to show green. Um, and uh, the points are all entirely under your control. So if we click on the 20, we can now drive that 20 if we want to. And yes, right. So Let's go back and uh, so one of the things you might have noticed me doing there on this 20 if you haven't seen that before is I was toggling the head coats so control 1, control 2, 3 and 4 uh, which means you can see if you change how these head coats all look um, so let's press control E uh, so you press control E to get back into the editor uh, at this point you're in the world editor so be careful uh, and then press the scenario editor again Hey there, I talk gadget. Good to see you on the channel. And again, it puts us back to the beginning. Now, the key thing to remember is that you can't change your free roam without rebooting it essentially back to the beginning. Uh, so, what you can't do is get yourself all the way to Marlow and then think, "Oh, you know what? I I think we should have um, some something down here to pick up." Because the minute you press edit, you're going to restart the scenario. Um, so you need to think about that in advance, or go ahead, put it in, and then you have to redrive down there again. And I wouldn't do save and resume if you're going to edit the scenario because they can get confused. Right, so control click, which will get us jumped there quickly. Press that play button. Here we are. Now let's see if it's going to let me change these. Now it'll let me change these. So having actually put drivers on them, run the thing, and come back out into it, I can now change numbers. So. What number is this? D8050. Um, and it's showing BF8050. So I can change the 8050 to anything I like. See? So I can put the 999 in there. I can put a number in there. Now the other thing is the B and the F relate to which way round. So the F, I remember rightly, relates to is it front or rear? Uh, you know, forge or reverse, sorry, the, the direction it's going in. And then the B is the code that's being displayed. So we could say A, or we could click on the other way. I don't think you see these until you actually run the scenario. So by setting it, say, to a, a G, then what will happen is these will be set to a particular sequence. Um, yeah, you're not going to see this until it starts. So. Is it going to start this way round or the other way round? Is the R, and this is unique to the 20. And then the G in this case will make it a class G train and set the lights up accordingly. So let's now try the steam engine. Now that's something a little bit more interesting. So what I haven't got here is my trusty manual. Hey there, I talk gadget. Thanks for the follow, much appreciated. Um, so again, I've got 4938, and I can change that to 1234. Because that's a number that a lot of pools have had in the past in my tiny world. Now what I'm going to do is pop up a manual because a lot of these more advanced slow posts, you will find the manual that tells you uh, how to um, 
here is the uh, the numbering feature. Of course, I'm probably going to be proven wrong on this. Going to be one of the ones that doesn't have it, but. Um, Right, so, assuming that uh, we are in a good place here, what we've got here is just looking because there's supposed to be a shed boat somewhere. Ah, here we are. Ah, just in the wrong place. Okay. So, if we set this to OXY hash 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 A4901, that's now Barton Hall. Okay, just not quite what I was expecting to say, but uh, that's fine. So, the idea is here the OXY is the, um, the shed code, which I'm going to find. Um, hash 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 here is a is a like a placeholder for filler. Uh, the A tells you what number plate that you want to put on there, so for uh, the number name the name to it. This now Bradfield Hall. I've changed that to a uh, C to the Hazel Hall. And then again the number I can put anything I want there because nine 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 is so common. Um, and So, that is really it for, uh, for tuning these things. Let's have a look at the 08 while we're here. The 08 is 13349, which is much simpler. Um, so I'm going to set that to um, 081234. No. 08123, trick. There you go, 08123. If you put the, an invalid number of digits, it will disappear. Um, and then you can even do that with coaches. So over here we've got W24379. Here it is there, look. So I can make that one a, a Western 99999. Okay, and I can put another number on there. So you really are quite um, able able to do quite a lot of flexibility in terms of changing the numbers. And all of that, you know, a lot of those numbers, uh, the, the numbering style is unique to the loco that you're actually placing. So you need to read the manual or experiment. Um, um, right, so uh, so let's have a look at chat. Hot dog man uh, in TS, can you make your own trains? Um, you can make your own trains. Um, you can use all the tools that we provide. Um, however, there are key tools that we don't provide that you will need, um, such as something like 3D Studio Max uh, or um, there are other tools available. Certainly, 3D Studio Max is what uh, we use in the studio. Um, and uh, once you've learned how to use that, and you can make the train, uh, with, there's then instructions and plugins and things that will help you get that train into the uh, into the game. Uh, so yes, it is possible. It's certainly not um, something for the uh, the faint of heart or the, for the uh, if you've never done 3D modeling before, then you'll find it uh, hard going. Um, but if you are interested, then um, certainly go and have a look on YouTube, find some tutorials and uh, get cracking, because it's certainly possible. <clears throat> if you want to make consists and things, then obviously you can do that in the game, or you can do what I've done here and just drop the trains and things down. Right, I think we're done with the free roam scenario. So if we now press play, Uh, remember, I think it's going to yeah, start us basically where we were. So let's do something very simple, uh, just to prove we're all working. And we're going to take the fall, and we're going to run the fall through here.
Wickham Branch really is a very nice route if you haven't uh, seen it yet and uh, you like steam era um, or early diesel then uh, this is definitely a, a good route to have a look at. Uh, yes, we do have a Virgin, uh, we don't have Virgin Pendlina, we do have a Class 390. Um, again, due to licensing considerations. So once again, you'll see pretty much signals are almost always going to be set to uh, green for you on a free run, because really, if you can do anything you want on a free run. Now, my plan is to go and get those coaches, and we really need to go all this way. You see, signal goes green. So if we come back now and uh, grab these, I want to go into here to get that. So I'm doing this rather fast. So you see this blue line, the blue line here and these markings tell me where the points are going to go. Uh, and then I click on this blue dot to change it. So you can see now it would go back into the grid shed. If I click here, it would come here and go into side in two. That's where I'm going to go. So this really is your model railway. You, you, you're under no restraints to do anything. You can decide to change your mind and do something completely different. You can just suddenly decide halfway through a journey, oh no, that coach has got a problem. Mm, how can I solve that problem? Or um, just stop at a passenger station and decide, ah, you know what? I'm going to drive a different train and carry on and do something else. Uh, Dark, yes, this is Wickham Branch. Uh, which is a workshop route. Just slowly buffer up to these coaches. around and maybe move them to a different siding or they can uh, go ahead and get the uh, get the coaches over to the station and and then do a passenger run. In number nine 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 Hazel Hall. Let's just keep going, um, and what we'll do is we'll, uh, so we're zooming around, and what we can do is we can have a look here at uh, where we're going to be going. So it's going to go this way, and then it's going to go this way. So actually I want to change that point so that we come across and change that point so that we go into here. And then we'll change that point so we come out, and then that will get us, whoops, going too far. Now that should get us. In a good place. Let's get sped up. That's all good coming up. Uh, Mike, no, uh, well, I did find it. It's uh, it is on the list of uh, a boat place to look at. So uh, watch the uh, watch the space for uh, updates to uh, Palmer Branch. I don't know, uh, there's no schedule at the moment for when that will happen. Just back off on the power, this is on the bottom two as well. Thank you. 
of it now. We'll look on the map, find out where we are on the lock route. So we're just coming across here and we'll be getting into uh, Bourne End. Hey there, Rap Devil and Good Pay, thanks for joining us this evening. Hey, Drew Cole, thanks for the follow, much appreciated. So we've got a 15 mile per hour speed limit as we come into uh, Bourne End, which is not surprising given the uh, sharp turn we've got to do. Now with a free roam scenario, you don't have to pick up um, passengers, but uh, you can if you want to. Um, hot dog man, I'm going to do one more scenario after this, and then we'll finish after that, because I'm not going to drive this one for too much longer. I think your earlier suggestion of an ice train is uh, spot on, actually. I quite like the idea of doing that, so I'm going to go and have a look in my little my little stockpile and see what we've got. We're coming up to the 15 now, so let's get slowed down for it. Thanks Panza, good to see you on the channel today. Breaks down at 12 inches of mercury. So just a reminder, we're running the Wickham branch. This is a free roam scenario that we've just created. The subject of this segment tonight. So we're coming up to the junction now as we're getting to Bourne End. We can see Bourne End platform one on the down here. Right now slow enough. There's nothing to stop you creating standard scenarios, even career scenarios on workshop routes, and you can even upload them to uh, workshop itself. Uh, you can't upload the free roam scenarios. Here. this is an example, you could have run a little branch line service that came in here, round round, and then took the coaches back again. Thanks to the follow there, W Long. So let's uh, bring the train to a stop. Uh, you can, if you want to, at any point, load and unload passengers on platforms. You don't have to have passenger stops. Um, they don't work quite the same way, but near enough. Hey, Jandra, thanks for the follow. Much appreciated. If we press T, we can open the doors. You obviously don't get the red bar coming along here. And whether I did or did not open my doors there really is that uh, the game doesn't mind. Um, it's uh, it's entirely up to me. Now if I go back to the uh, to this view here, we can see the uh, the blue line is now there. Before it wasn't there because it only goes a certain distance ahead of you. And uh, now here set to default putting us through here so we're going to change that and come through this line here you can see the green line carries the blue line so it carries on going through and this is where it stops so you can see the blue line stop and that's just because it only goes a certain distance ahead of you so once we've checked and the doors are now closed then we're safe to proceed which we look like we are yeah. Wally. 
course, because it's a free run, you can basically, you're free to do whatever you want to. You can change all the points, even if normally you can't. Uh, the game has a concept of automatic points and manual points. Automatic points are ones which are only controllable by the in-game dispatcher. Manual points are ones that you can control yourself with those blue dots. Now, when you're running a, a route in free roam, every single point becomes a uh, manual point. So you've got a lot of, a lot of freedom. Hey Spikey, um, I'm actually uh, we're arranging something uh, at the moment about uh, creating a group, so bear with me on that one. It's not been forgotten, and uh, hopefully it'll be a really interesting stream uh, when we can uh, we can make that happen. Try to have a, our first guest on the show, um, who is one of our uh, guys who does all the um, initial route setup and track planning and so forth. So uh, that should be really interesting. Welcome to the show there, Jamie. Good to see you again. I'm going to put some water in before we uh, forget. Be a, a, a through service at Ruben Green, I think. Um, so, what is my exact function of DTG? Actually, never did this. Um, so, I'm a games designer, uh, and my job is to design the next generation of Green Sim. So you can see, all of the locos we've got over there is sitting there. And what we'll do, actually, let's stop. Stop the train. We'll be in rather a hurry. Just to demonstrate before we finish this and get on with something else. If your maps aren't loading, GG Spikey, go and double check on the Google website and make sure that you have enabled um, Static Maps API. Um, and then retype the key in very, 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 very carefully. Um, those two mistakes pretty much uh, account for just about everything that uh, that goes wrong when people are trying to uh, use Google Maps. So, um, what I generally do is get people to um, paste the key from Google um, on their little console web app um, and paste it into Notepad, boost the font size of it so you can see it really clearly, and then put it. Man, uh, step by step, key by key into the uh, field. Um, the reason for that is that the font that's used by the web browser mixes up things like L's and I's and 1's and O's and zeros and things like that, so they all look the same. Whereas once you paste them into Notepad, they don't look the same anymore. So I've just uncoupled from that by clicking on here and then clicking on one of the uh, options. Now I've just decided I'm going to go and drive this train because, you know, it's Got a slightly more sensible number, so I just click on it. Now this is my train. Start moving. Click send the player. And let's uh, make sure the points are set for me. See the blue light come blue line comes down. So of course this is the real. What's really nice about free runs is that you can just decide that uh, I want to do something different right now. Go ahead and do it, and uh, it's really. Um, up to you. Okay, I think we've done enough on free roams now. I hope that was useful. 
get a little list here showing all the different trains that we've experienced. Ignore the one these some of these ones are from, from previous scenarios. Let's go back to changing route and uh, think about another route to try. Uh, one moment. <laughs> 